Hey everyone. We've been getting a lot of questions from people on how you get started with Vaadin. A lot of the tutorials and stuff that we have out there kind of assume that you have a certain level of experience working with Java and Java projects and we realize that not everyone has that. So in this video I wanted to just give everyone a quick introduction to how you get started with a Vaadin project more or less from scratch. So let's get started here. I'm on the Vaadin website here and in order to get started we'll click the get started button. Here we will start with an empty project and we will use the Spring Boot stack for that. So if you look at the instructions here it tells you that we need to install JDK 8 or, or later and Node.js 10. So for the JDK, you can go to uh, OpenJDK and download the latest uh, release. In this case, right now, it's uh, 12. So choose your uh, operating system here and follow the instructions to download that before going any further. The same with Node. So here you can go and download the LTS version and again follow the instructions to get that installed on your computer. Finally, you'll need an IDE, an editor for a code. If you don't already have an editor, one that's very popular and kind of easy to use is IntelliJ by JetBrains. There's a community edition that's free to use and for this example it will have all the features that we need. So go ahead and download that and make sure that you can run it. With all of that installed, we're now able to go ahead and actually download our project starter here. And let's call this my first Vaadin app. So when we hit download here, what we'll get is a zip file. And if we open up this zip file, we'll see that it contains some files, a source folder, and this pom.xml. This pom.xml is essentially a file that describes the project and all of its dependencies, and this is something that we can open up in our ID. Now, I already have my IntelliJ open here, and the way that I like to open projects is by actually just taking the XML file, dragging it on top of the icon, and opening it that way. If uh, you don't want to do that. You can also go into the file menu here and then use the open here to open the POM XML. It will ask you if you want to open up the XML file as a project and you just choose yes there. So when you open it, you'll notice that it takes a little while as it's resolving dependencies. So it's actually going out and downloading all the dependencies that we need. So Vaadin uh, spring and everything else that we need. If we take a look at what we have in our project here, we have a source file and under source main Java we have our application. The application class here is the Spring Boot application that is used to uh, start up the application. So what this will do is it will automatically start a server and serve up our application. So that's nothing Vaadin specific. The Vaadin code comes in here. So we have a main view. And this main view, by definition, since it has a empty route annotation and it's called main view, will be mapped to the root of our uh, application. So slash nothing, just the empty. Empty URL will match with this. It's a vertical layout, which means that anything we put into this, anything we call add with, will get added on top of each other. Additionally, there's a message bean class just to show how Spring works. Uh, so this is a Spring service that gets auto-wired here. This is not something that we need to cover in this one, so we can just go ahead and delete that for now. So we can just go ahead and delete all of this. Yeah, actually I'll just delete everything here for now. There's also this PWA annotation, which uh, automatically generates a application manifest file 
and a offline fallback page for your application. So this is something that's very nice to have when you're uh, deploying the application that makes makes it possible for your end users to install the application. Uh, for right now, I can go ahead and comment that out because it's not something that I'll need right now. Some other things that we have in here, we have a test folder. So here's a example test of how you would test the application that we had. You'll have the POM file, which de defines all the all the dependencies, and then there's a uh, yeah, and that's that's pretty much it. So we can go ahead and run the application. You can see that IntelliJ has already noticed that this is a Spring Boot application and offers us to run this application class right here. If you don't want to use that, what you can do also is go to Edit Configurations and define a Maven target. So we can call this something like run app. And here, what we'll uh, actually call is spring boot run. So this is the Maven target. This is the equivalent of us going into the terminal and typing in Maven spring boot run. So the advantage of Defining it up here is that we can just run the app from here, and if we want to debug it, we can press the debug uh, icon here and debug it from there. So right now, we emptied out everything from main view, so it's not going to show anything even if we do start it. So before we start it, let's add a component here. We can add anything uh, through the add command to a layout, and I'll add a new h1, so a header level 1, and we'll start with a classic of hello world, like that. All right, so I'm going to start my application, and I'm going to start it with the debug mode on, so we can see how we can also debug the application once it's up and running. Now, the first time we do this, it's going to take us a little bit of time. The reason for that is that Vaden is going to go and fetch a bunch of front-end dependencies. So the framework itself is split into two parts, essentially. We have the UI components, the part that runs in the browser, and then there's the Java part that runs on the server and communicates with those UI components. And what's happening right now is that we're downloading all those front-end dependencies and building a essentially a bundle file, a JavaScript bundle file that uh, gets sent over to the browser. So the first time we run this, it'll take uh, maybe half a minute, a minute, depends on how fast your computer is, but that's uh, only something you'll need to do the first time you run it. Okay, so we can see the application has started and it has started on port 8080. So we'll go into our browser again and we'll go to localhost port 8080 and sure enough we can see hello world here okay so uh, we have a very simple use case here hello world essentially but we want to do something more fun so let's look at how we can make an actual interactive application so we'll add a button and We'll give this button a caption, let's say, click me. And if we look at what this takes in, let's see here. All right, so now that we are, we after we started the application the first time, what happens is that those front-end dependencies got added to this node modules folder. And since IntelliJ noticed that there's a bunch of new files. It's doing a little bit of indexing, which means that we don't have autocomplete available for us for a little while. That's fine if you, you know what you're doing, but uh, might be a little bit confusing if if you're kind of relying on, on the autocomplete. Uh, for now, we can continue working. So what I'll do is I'll add a lambda for a click listener. So essentially, 
the way we read this is that there's a new button with the caption uh, click me and then here we define that whenever a click happens whatever is in inside of these brackets will get run and what we can do for now is just again call add so this is add on the vertical layout and we can add a let's do a span so this is an HTML span and let's just say clicked so we can see something something on the screen and you can see that this indexing is is taking a while there are quite a quite a few files that need to get indexed again this is fortunately something that only happens the first time you run it not something you need to deal with every time so we'll for now just stick to manual coding so we'll call this button like so and then we can once we have defined our variable button we can call add with the button like that and now that we have our application updated we'll build the application if you're in IntelliJ you'll need to click on the little build icon for this to happen Eclipse for instance will uh, will do this automatically for you okay so now of course since I was running without without autocomplete I didn't have this automatically pulling in in the uh, the actual what's it called uh, the import for this file so what I'll do is I'll I'll wait for this to finish finish importing and then or finish indexing and then we'll fix this almost there all right so now you can see uh, with the indexing complete it's complaining about this uh, I'll use the auto uh, or the so I'll use the fix fix problems here the red uh, red light bulb here to import span and again now we'll try to build this if we look at the debug down here what we should hopefully see is that there's a reload happening on our server and what that means is that when we go into the browser and refresh we'll see that change reflected here and when we click on the button we can see that click show up here if we put in a breakpoint since we're running this in debug mode and we click on the button hmm. okay so that didn't work um, let's see why did that not work this might be because we started the application from Maven and with the dev tools on that actually means that it will fork the process so um, let's try that again instead of running it through Maven I will run this application class so essentially what I'm doing here is I'll do debug application so we'll start the server again but this time directly through uh, by running this application hopefully this will let us debug the application then all right so we can see the server is up and running let's refresh click oh no I actually removed the breakpoint so that's not going to work all right so there we go uh, so now you can see that this hit here we're able to inspect things so if we wanted to see for instance what the click event included we could see things like x and y coordinates for the click we could see if any modifier keys were uh, were held down while this uh, click occurred and so on so that's a really handy way for you to actually uh, uh, see what's going on if something's not working the way that you would expect it to work once you're done you can just press the play button continue working and that way the app continues to run here all right that is it so this is a very quick introduction to running a button application from scratch 
hadn't really prepared too much, uh, but hopefully you got a couple of good tips about how to run and debug an application. If you do have any questions, please feel free to add comments below and I'll, I'll try to address those. And if you think that these kinds of videos are helpful, uh, let me know what kind of topics you'd like me to cover in the future and I'll, I'll try to record some more. Thanks.